35 years as a group. Um, I can actually say Neil Gouven over here on drums, he and I went to school together. And if you do the addition, it's almost 45 years. And you, ha and you haven't killed each other yet. It's unbelievable. We, we're like <laughs> brothers. We haven't killed each other. And uh, But anyway, that's getting a little bit off the story. But <laughs> yes, the uh, band has been together for the better part of 35 years. Mm -hmm. uh, seven years I spent with Roomful of Blues back in the 90s, 91 to 97, 98. But what do, I, what, what do I see looking back? I see a family. You know, when we were younger, we used to party together and have picnics and play music and all that. We don't do that so much anymore because we have our own families at home, wives and children. But musically, it, it doesn't get any closer. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to, to get together and, and be a family uh, and be on stage together as music musical family. Uh, that, that's the, the crazy part. It just freaks me out that uh, we're still doing it. And I see no end to it. As long as we want to keep going, we will. <laughs> Same thing one more time. Here we go. Yeah, trying the same thing one more time. Well, if you think that thing will change, babe, you gotta be out of your mind. You don't listen to me, baby Well, you can't hear what I say That's right You don't listen to me, baby And I can't hear what you say Well, we can't work it out Go our separate ways, but I'll give it a shot, baby. If you give it a shot, baby, I do as well as you do. You need to do better oh, in words and in deeds.
baby This ain't gonna work anymore I've always said that I like listening to music as much or more as I like playing it. And playing with these guys, I get to do both at the same time. Um, and, you know, uh, you'll notice that sometimes I get right up next to Ray. Um, and one of the things I'm doing, and I, I don't think most people get this, I mean, yeah, there's the, uh, the getting up to him and getting close for support. And yes, I know it's sort of visually strong per uh, performance-wise, but the first the, and foremost reason I'm doing it is when I do that, I can hear his voice acoustically, not through the monitors, not through the PA. Um, and that gives me something to react to. Um, even, if I, even if I know the song and I'm playing mostly the same notes every night, every decision I make as far as how loud I'm playing, what register I'm playing in, how many notes I'm playing, uh, the first thing I'm listening to is Ray's voice. Um, and then as far as timing, I'm working off of everybody else. I mean, then there are a lot of other things. Mudcat and I have been playing together for so long. We have a very close connection. We hear a lot of things similarly. There's so a lot of things Mudcat and I are throwing back and forth. Anthony and I, as we are... Um, sort of playing in the same range, guitar and piano very much occupy the same range. I'm listening to him very carefully, and I know he's listening to me, so we're sort of snaking around each other, and sometimes I might push forward just a little bit, and he'll pull back, sometimes vice versa. Sometimes we're both going for it, sometimes we're both laying out, because silence is awesome. Um, and then as far as time, as far as, as far as time goes, you know, I'm inside Neil's kit the whole night as far as, like, where is it? Are we pushing ahead? Are we laying back? You know, and even the same song, based on the sound of the room, Anthony mentioned the difference between digital piano and acoustic piano. Sometimes it's just as simple as the gear we're being offered to play with. Um, but even if we're playing the same notes in the same song from night to night, the performance can completely change. Um, and that's because we're listening so hard to each other. And for me, you know, I mean, Ray's my favorite singer. Um, you know, uh, you know, and f for me, it's like, I don't want to do anything that's going to get in the way of that. So I'm listening as carefully as I possibly can the whole time we're playing. And even if a part has worked every night, if Ray's doing something different and I feel like my usual part's going to step on that, I'll pull back. I don't have to play it, you know, uh, because I'm just trying to be part of the best music I can be part of. And to me, that's listening to Ray sing. Yeah.
Yes, please Pour me another glass of wine Oh, I'm tasting this 
them salty tears. the music we play is honest music it's that you know i mean the only thing that's electric is the guitars that get plugged in you know there's no kind of synthesizers there's nothing a mud cat stole 99 percent of our songs uh mud cat's still playing the acoustic bass you know neil just playing traditional drum drums you know i have a pretty good sounding electric piano but i still can't stand playing it i mean <laughs> the, the band is a totally different band when we um well, we play a festival or we play like a club that has a uh, an acoustic um grand piano in it because uh, the subtleties are so different. You know, the band, like Mike uh, was saying before, we listen to each other. And the difference between um, having an all acoustic uh, uh, piano versus a digital piano is a remarkable difference. The way, um, the way Ray reacts and the way the, uh, the rest of the uh, band reacts to, like, you know, the actual sound of the instrument. Uh, but as far as, you know, people going away with, you know what? And this happens all the time uh, when we're on the road, whether it be a big festival or it be an intimate um, place like this. What makes me feel good, and I think the rest of the guys too, people leave smiling. And that's a, and that's a really cool thing. Yeah.
that I know there's a way. through that door, you know. Cool. This is yeah. cool. No, this is great. I mentioned to uh, Mudcat and the band in the, in the green room, as they call it back there, that, uh, see, my wife's a caterer, and she's been doing it for years and years. We've always talked about maybe having a, uh, she cooks the food, gourmet food, really excellent. I provide the music. We'll bring in maybe 100 people and charge quite a bit th per person, but... <laughs> But that's what it would take, and I think that, that would work, and I, I feel that in this room. You know, it's wonderful. And what you're doing is, is, is yeah. God bless. Give them a nice round of applause. We need more, we need more of this. Yeah. You know what? You know what? You'd pay it. <laughs> I know you would. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, you know, for me, uh, uh, you know, coming into a situation like this where it's intimate and we can play for people who clearly are receptive, um, you know, I mean, the club scene isn't what it used to be. And there were a few years there where I thought, okay, that's it. This is the end of live music in my lifetime. That's interesting. Um, but I feel like 
I feel like people are starting to come back out. And it's not the same as it was, you know, when I started doing this 20, 25 years ago. Um, it's a different thing, but there's still an audience out there, people who really respond to and react to the music. Um, and, you know, situations like this, this is completely unique for me between, uh, you know, we've played in little intimate rooms like this. We've played in front of video cameras in different situations. Um, but this kind of uh, intimate show and performance that's being taped, that's great. To me, that's, uh, that's a new way for music to get out, for our music to get out to people who are receptive to it. And, you know, in, in this day and age, you know, uh, you know, giving people access to things that may be sidestepping the, uh, you know, the traditional club circuit, or the same thing that happens with record labels, the same things that happens with, you know, print media, you know. Um, the bottom line is you're just trying to get to the people who, who, the people who want to hear what you're doing, and this is a very cool way to do that. <laughs> It's away with the cheese. Rat! That's a rat trap, baby. That's a rat trap, baby. That ain't gonna work around you. Well, late one night, you was out on a prowl. Sweet like a fox and wise as a owl. You made it a trap, tell your way real quiet. Then a rat come along and decided to try it. Watch yourself with no guarantee. Cause with the second rat that gets away with the cheese. That's a red trap, baby. That's a red trap, baby. It ain't gonna work around here. It ain't gonna work around
You know, uh, with the except, I, I hate to leave Mike out of anything, but you with, with, out of anything you but want. with the exception of Mike here, we're 60 years old, each of us, and uh, we survived. Uh, well, if you are of our age or vintage, you know that when disco came along, you know that a lot of the live music venues closed down and had uh, records spinning. Well, we survived that. We survived uh, when VCRs came out. That was a big thing. Now all of a sudden, folks are going to stay home and watch movies. This c never happened before. Okay, so we lost a little bit of audience there. All of a sudden, the drinking age went straight back up to 21, where it had been down to 18. You know, we lost the college audience in the clubs. I mean, we've weathered a ton of uh, <laughs> obstacles that we really had nothing to do with, but we had to find a way to still keep playing. And so, like, Mike's correct, the, uh, these new uh, fangled, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> new fangled. Yeah, you know. Mudcat survived the rise of the wax cylinder. <laughs> 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 well, he's, he's right in spirit there. I know, I, you know. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the idea, you know, we're, we're playing a traditional music of blues, and uh, no matter how quote, modern or original we get with it, we are traditional musicians, and, and we're kind of proud of it. And uh, luckily, luckily for us, when we go to places in Europe and so forth, that's an appreciated thing. And, I, and I'm, not gonna, I'm not ready to say it's not appreciated here, but we, they've certainly thrown a lot of, uh, you know, bureaus and uh, chairs and stuff in front of the door that we've been trying to get through for an awfully long time. One, you know. two, three, four. you by my side and open up my eyes baby no matter how hard I try I'm living living from chill to chill living without you baby means I'm living from chill to chill skip to the beach down the lonely avenue Drifting and drifting, I don't know what to do, but I'm living, living from chin to chin. Living without you, baby, means I'm living from chin to chin. you in Sunday school when push come to shove stand on your own two feet don't look back 
Because the devil wants you to be I'm living Living from day to day Living without you, baby Means I'm living from day to day hey. Living Living without you, baby Me not living from day to day You know, I was fortunate to grow up in uh, this little town of Westerly, Rhode Island. And so, yes. My dad was a music teacher in the Westerly school system. And as students, he had people like Al Copley, Duke Robillard, Rich Latai. Sound familiar, these guys from Room for the Blue? I, I attribute a lot of the success of the music scene in that area to my dad, <laughs> believe it or not. That's right. <laughs> because he was, he was so sincere about, about, about the yeah, well, the Knickerbocker is uh, my spawning ground where I used to go see Room for when I was 16 years old. I, I wasn't supposed to be there. My mother sang at the Knickerbocker as a jazz singer uh, in the late 1940s. My uncles had a band with my brother playing at the Knickerbocker. Two uncles, one on the bass, one on the guitar. My brother on uh, singing and piano. So there's a long history of, of musical music. But as far as the demographics of it, you know, I don't know, we're between Boston and New York. You know, there's a lot of influx of uh, Italians and, and Jewish people. You name it. They're, they're there. And uh, there's a lot of... Th Muddy Waters said to me, you Italians, you got soul. What is it? Something in that pasta sauce? Or <laughs> Literally, I'm not making this up. And there's a, and there's a, there's, anyway, it's just a wonderful upbringing. I never played any other kind of music. G before I played blues, I listened a little bit to, like, uh, I don't know, Cat Stevens, uh, you know... Uh, Things like that. A little bit of, uh, well, Hank Williams, no, before before that even. But there wasn't much of a time period where I'd, I spent away from the blues since I was six, 14, 15, 16. I dreamed last night, oh, like I dreamed the night before. Have mercy. I dreamed last night. the door Oh When I opened up my eyes Baby you weren't there anymore anymore Baby I hear your voice Every well, I hear your voice, baby, in the shadow that I know. play it for you.
was a sad, sad day when he turned your body down. Oh, yeah. Well, it was a sad. Oh, I saw your reflection in that shovel and dug it Well, I saw your reflection, oh Lord, in the shovel that dug the ground. I play, uh, when I write a song, yeah, I play a little bit of guitar. I wouldn't play in front of you, but I play a little bit of piano. I play the Native American flute. I play anything I get my hands on, really. But to write a song, I uh, will diddle a little bit on the piano. Just, just give me an idea, you know, the right key and the right feel. Uh, and the same thing with the guitar. Uh, I know there's a lot of different uh, ways, especially with the technology today with computers and uh, and uh, Pro Tools and whatnot to convey my thoughts to the other band members about a new song. But <laughs> Mike will tell you, <laughs> no. I got this little handheld, you know, like a secretary would uh, w would dictate into this little machine. <laughs> uh, that's what I use, you know, and it, it sounds it sounds to me like a '78 record, you know. <laughs> it, it sounds all scratchy and it sounds good, especially when I play harp in it. <laughs> and I'll bring that to the band, and he cracks up, Mike. I love it. He <laughs> This is my idea for a new song. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, cool. Yeah. And, and he'll pick right up on it and, and add to it, and everybody does. And, and then it becomes a, a band effort. Is that the process? It, it is kind so of. you're coming in, you've yeah. got something that's really raw, and everybody else is yeah. just. Usually lyrics and a feel. That's about as far as I get. Maybe some chord changes. And then the process begins, you know. Mm -hmm. For me, you know, uh, you know, I, I've I've always felt that there's a lot going on in this band, and one of the things, especially when you play traditional music, which this is very much, we're playing traditional music. Um, you know, we're not creating the language; we're just trying to say something in this language. Um, but the way you the way you create something in traditional music is by bringing your own experience to the table by being yourself and whatever that is. Um, and, you know, for the five of us, I mean, I've never played with other musicians who are as good at playing with their ears, not their hands. We're constantly listening. We're constantly altering what we're doing based on, um, based on what we hear each other doing. So we're all bringing our experiences to the table, um, which aren't just listening to blues records. You know, it's everything you are, everything you experience, everything you learn goes into that. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's just the, you know, greatest collection of knuckleheads that I could be <laughs> surrounded with. Well put. <laughs> you know, um, because I do. I feel like I feel like this band, you know, as much as we're steeped in the tradition, I listen to these guys play and I hear individual voices, and I hear the collective of what all those is, of what all those voices create. Um, you know, I don't just hear bass, I hear, you know, I don't just hear wood and strings, I hear Mudcat's personality with everything that is coming through. You know, same with all of these guys, and same with the way we interact, you know, uh, you know, all the sort of dysfunctional uh, married couple stuff that comes with being with anyone for 35, 40 years, you know, like that's part of the way we sound, you know. I think that's it, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. As many times as I do, it's hot. Oh, yeah.
By my side, and open up my eyes, baby. No matter how hard I try, I'm living, living from chill to chill. Living without you, baby, means I'm living from chill to chill. Skip to the beach, down the lonely avenue, drifting and drifting. I don't know what to do, but I'm living, living from chin to chin, living without you, baby. 